Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Outside the Box podcast. My name is Nick Ingvall. I'm pretty excited about today's episode because I've got two young sneaker enthusiasts that are doing some really cool stuff in New York City. And I, you know, if you've been listening to this podcast for any amount of time, uh, you, you know that my goal with this is to, to help elevate the people that are doing cool things that aren't necessarily talking about just the regular old release stuff. I think that's all fun and games, but I think we could have more important conversations when it comes to sneakers. So today I want to introduce you to Ross and Alex. Uh, they started a nonprofit in New York City called Soul Purpose NYC. And uh, I guess, guys, welcome to the show. How, how, how are you doing? Doing good, doing good. Appreciate you having us on the show. It's a cool experience. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. You know, of course, we're uh, we're more than grateful for being able to have this kind of a, of an opportunity. Of course, of course, it's it's uh. So I guess like the best thing to to start off with would be let's uh, let's first find out how you guys got interested in sneakers. What was it about sneakers that appealed to you? You know, originally. Yeah, so, you know, for me personally, all my life, I've been playing sports, uh, specifically, you know, basketball was one of my favorite. Um, you know, I always grew up needing basketball sneakers. You know, you can't play on the court without the right sneakers. You know, you roll your ankle, it's not going to be a good experience. But, you know, as I kept playing through school and, you know, other teams like AU, I was really introduced to the basics, basics there. And, you know, as I got older, I started looking, trying to find more of those cool pairs that I liked. Um you know, my friends were all into sneakers around me. All my favorite athletes had their own line. You know, guys like, of course, Jordan, Steph Curry, KD. And, you know, the kind of more low-key guys like PJ Tucker. But he had 5,000 pairs of shoes in his collection. <laughs> you know, I just thought that was pretty cool. But that was just for me. Yeah, I'd say for me, um, you know, I grew up in Queens. I've recently moved to the city. Uh, you know, sneakers are a huge part of, my culture growing up and then they're also something that i can share you know amongst really anybody uh you know sneakers are you know as essential as food and other things uh to some people and if i had to uh you know say sneakers have brought me really into a bunch of different worlds uh, you know i play soccer um, i'm hoping to continue doing that in college you know obviously ross and i have been able to bond over our sneakers to do some good and that that's you know what we look for yeah that's awesome so so how long have you guys known each other before before um you, you got starting soul purpose so all through high school since okay. ninth, ninth grade till now cool we met in yeah. high school and yeah and you guys are you guys are both seniors right now yep yeah cool cool it's it's awesome so uh you know just to, to hear you guys taking the initiative, as I said before we started recording, I'm just super impressed that you guys are are, are taking this on. Um, I think one of the things in, in your recent coverage um, was the uh, the idea that that, you know, nobody else your age is taking the initiative to do this. And I think that's something really cool. And, and uh, you know, however it lasts and however it grows, like that's just a, a such a great start to wherever you guys want to go with it. I'm, I'm really excited to support you in any way that I can, but um, tell us how, you know, the whole soul purpose. So soul purpose NYC, right? H tell us how that all kind of came to, came about. So first, you know, we were motivated by this video that we saw on YouTube. Um, and it was a jogger running past a homeless man who had no sneakers and, you know, no socks at all. Um, the jogger then took off his own sneakers and socks and gave them to the homeless man. And he actually ran home barefoot. Um, I think it really hit home for us and we were moved personally. And, you know, as we're into sneakers, I think our perspective, our shoe game was really changed. Um, we found something that we were able to combine, you know, our love for sneakers with a passion to help those in need. And we created Soul Purpose, you know, made a business plan <clears throat> and we actually entered our school's, uh, version of, of Shark Tank, uh, they call it Spark Tank, uh, our school Dwight, and we actually won a $3,000 grant. So that's kind of how it all came came to be. That's pretty cool. Did, what, what were the other kind of... Ross nailed it perfectly. Yeah. What, what were the other kind of ideas that were, were thrown out for Spark Tank that you were up against to, to, for that competition? Um, well, really, I think um, 
you know, Spark Tank is like a platform uh, that the Dwight School promotes uh, social entrepreneurship through. Um, so we've seen, uh, you know, this year a number of nonprofits, um, and we've seen businesses in uh, robotic arms being 3D printed. Uh, the space really gives, you know, you know, pretty much us uh, unlimited control of, you know, what we want to do with our ideas. Uh, so it wasn't really a matter of who we were against. It was a matter of, you know, how serious Ross and I really were. Um, and, you know, the Dwight School recognized that and you know, they've, they've supported us continuously throughout and we're really grateful for that. Yeah, that's, that's super dope. I mean, there's just so much, I, I think it's, it's so important, you know, being, me being older and, but being in this, you know, 20 years now, it's, it's, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to be a, a more inviting person to the, the business of sneakers to younger folks like yourself, because ultimately I, I thrive off of being around like that energy of like those teen, like the, the teenage years and the early twenties, right? Because everybody has a lot of fire to do what they want to do. And, you know, sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad, but like, it's still the energy that I want to be around because it, it gets me motivated. It, it gets me inspired and, and, and ultimately pushes me to think, think about things differently. Right. Because everybody's, everybody's really like trying to figure out what they want to do and, and taking a lot more risk than they do, you know, not to pick on some of my peers that have been in the footwear industry for a long time, but after you've been doing it for a long time, you know, it, it can get repetitive and, and you got to find ways to challenge yourself and, and, you know, think outside of the box, which, you know, is why, again, why this podcast even exists is so I can have these kind of conversations. Um, and hopefully, you know, both, you know, peers of your guys's at your age and also, you know, my peers, in, in, you know, at the older ages in the sneaker business get to hear this and, and think, okay, how come I didn't do that already? How come I haven't taken action to, you know, put, give back into the community? Because I think, you know, for me, and, and you guys can kind of talk to this too, but for me, like, I always feel, feel much more fulfilled giving back than getting material stuff, right? And it seems kind of contradictive as somebody who's a big sneaker collector, right? But like, at the end of the day, I, I realize I'm just lucky to have a pair of shoes. And, you know, there were times in my life where that was a challenge. So like, now, as, as an adult, I'm just like, like, you know, I want to I want to be able to, f like, find guys like you that are that are out there pushing, you know, along with the rest of your school, along with the rest of your sports, and trying to make the world a better place at the same time, because I think, you know, we're just in a place where we need it more than ever, right? On the on top of all of, you know, my experience, but um, what I guess, like, how, what was the, what's like this starting process of that, you know, like you, you start the, you get the business plan. Um, you know, are you thinking like, at, in that ori original conversation of starting the business plan together and talking about where you wanted to go with it? Were you talking about, you know, like, working with uh, local retailers or local spots for drop offs? Or are you talking about like, I've seen I saw the, the video where you guys did some, some kind of like, uh, almost like feeding the hungry kind of handout, right? Where you, you clean up the shoes, put them back into a package of some sorts, and then hand them out to, to the homeless. How, I, like, how do you, how did you decide to do, to do both of those things? And like, I guess, you know, uh, is there more excitement for you guys in terms of like where you could go with either of those ideas? Well, I think, um, you know, to start off, and I'm sure Ross is going to have, uh, you know, no matter who's talking, we still have more to, uh, add on, um, you know, it really started off as being, you know, I, I think in, in simplest words, we didn't think that, you know, we would grow even to where we are today, yet along, you know, sole purpose being a reality. Um, you know, we started off uh, just brainstorming based on what we know about sneakers. Um, and, and, you know, after uh, doing a little bit of research and wanting to give back, uh, you know, that sneakers and socks are amongst the most requested items in New York city, homeless shelters and homeless shelters anywhere. Um, and, and I think that's kind of really what brought, you know, it's our attention that like, this is a pretty significant deal. And these people, you know, need sneakers and socks. Um, you know, I'm sure Ross will speak about our, um, further plans, but 
when we decided to start our sole purpose takes it to the streets events which is what you were referring to before um we had to figure out a way for us to get involved but also obviously follow the rules that are in place um so anybody under the age of 21 cannot enter uh a homeless shelter or any facility of that nature um so this combined with uh the knowledge that we gained after uh, you know, doing a little bit of research on homelessness in New York City. Um, you now, it nearly takes up to three months to even be accepted into a shelter system. Um, so that's three months on the street. And that was something that we took into consideration. Um, you know, there's not just a population of homeless who are in shelters seeking permanent housing, but there's also ones that are on the street. And I think that, you know, after, after we kind of like, we're like, well, we have two things here that we could combine and do something with it and we came up with our sole purpose takes it to the streets um it allowed our team to interact with individual homeless people uh you know it, i think being more rewarding than like you said earlier any pair of sneakers that ross and i could have unboxed uh you know it, it went my unbelievable amount of you know just gratitude and, and really um the care that we show these people yeah, and just to add on a little bit, um, you know, in the beginning, we did all ha have that, you know, brainstorm sessions, you know, we only had really ideas, but we knew we wanted to work with sneakers. That was our, that was our, you know, forte. Um, and we, you know, we came up with, you know, new and gently used sneakers and socks. Um, I had a lot of sneakers in the back of my closet. Alex had a lot of his and, you know, we, we talked to other friends and they had the same problem. So, you know, we connected those two. And, you know, our, our thing is we collect these new and gently used sneakers and socks. We clean them, sanitize them in a special solution, and we deliver them to homeless shelters in New York. So, you know, when we get when we get these sneakers and socks, we get them through, whether it's donation box locations, uh, mobile sneaker drives, uh, you know, just regular sneaker and sock drives uh, in schools or businesses, and, and our P.O. box. Um, you know, our, our mission is to provide, you know, a dependable pair of sneakers and socks to every man, woman, and child in New York. Um, yeah. That's awesome, man. Uh, so, so just so everybody's that's listening or watching, I'm going to get your guys' information. We'll have that in the description wherever you're watching or listening to this. So if you guys want to, uh, you know, reach out or drop stuff off, uh, like you'll be able to connect with, with the guys to, to figure out how to do that, what's best for you. But, um. I guess like it, you know, I should have asked a little bit sooner, but like how long has the process been for you guys been doing this? Cause you mentioned like the three month thing for homeless, you know, before they get into shelters. So there's obviously like a, uh, an interesting cycle that you guys can potentially kind of, you know, get involved with, right. Where it's like, Hey, you know, just thinking of like, uh, you know, maybe that person that, that has, that isn't going to be in the shelter, that's going to be out on the streets longer, might get a, a, a newer pair or a better conditioned pair than a, than a slightly worn pair. But like, so how did, how did that, you know, how long have you been doing that? And like, what was your kind of exp experience with the first time you did that publicly? Did you, did you just get volunteers from, from school friends, that kind of thing? Or what was that process like for you? So, uh yeah, go for it, Ross. Yeah, I was just gonna say we we started, you know, all the ideas and brainstorming sole purpose about a year, almost a year now. I want to say, um, and you know, those events that you were talking about, we had, um, you know, our sole purpose team members are made up of high school students and college students, um, and for that, you know, our first event um, last year, uh, we had you know our Dwight team members come and we set up tables. Um, you know, we had waters for them and we gave out our purpose packs. Um, and when I say purpose pack, you know, I mean, um, it comes like in a gift. Actually, I have a bag right here. It's not stamped, but you know, it's a, one of these bags. It has our logo in the middle and it'll have a pair of sneakers and two pairs of socks in them. And that's what we give out. Um, and you know, in those events we started last year, um, we had our team members come uh, it was kind of like, you know, a, a little of assembly line. We had our sneakers. We had, you know, two people dealing with the homeless. They were all lined up and um, they would come down the line. They would grab a purpose pack. They'd get a water and then they'd go and the next would come. Um, 
But I think, you know, those events are a really great experience. Like Alex said, you know, we can't really go into these shelters and, and talk to these clients and, and, you know, give out the purpose packs. But, you know, it's a great experience for me and Alex. And, you know, I think it, it makes us want to do more and it gets, you know, these other kids involved who I think, you know, they want to give back and they want to give back in their own communities, but they don't, you know, really know how some of the things that are offered to them is, you know, not saying it's bad, but, you know, reading to old people might not be, you know, your favorite thing. Maybe hanging with your friends and giving out some cool sneakers and socks and, you know, right in the homeless face and, and getting in that cool experience is, you know, I, that that's something that really connects. But yeah. yeah, just to add on to what Ross said, uh, our first event, we, uh, I, I don't, I don't think we really knew what to expect. We set up outside of Tompkins Square Park and, you know, the, one of the difficult things that we have to take into consideration before bringing and setting everything up is, you know, sizing. I mean, be, it's a very important thing. And, and you know, it, it's our mission to, you know, we don't want to turn anybody away. And um, we brought 125 purpose packs with us that day, uh, you know, in a, in a variety of different sizes. And we were set up to go at around nine we had a line of over 50 people at 8:45 before we even started and within about an hour and a half maybe two hours that i think that's even pushing it we were we had given out every single purpose pack um so it, it was an amazing experience ross and i got to talk about it on our news segment which aired on wpix you know they covered the event and you know both of us were like on 25 minutes, we've helped out 125 different people just by you know, co collecting a few pairs of sneakers. Uh, so it was really awesome. Each event is so successful. Yeah, that's that's so cool, man. Um, it, it It's crazy, too, because I think like that's something that, uh, you know, you know, you, you just you couldn't possibly think of all the things that you're going to run into. Right. Like you've mentioned, you know, like the you know, learn about the three month window before people can get into shelters, the sizing thing, um, you know, and, and I was, I'm curious, like, did you guys do any kind of promoting of that other than just kind of, you know, through your, your own contacts and then saying, Hey, we're going to show up and do this. And then maybe putting up a little sign or something to get the line started. Yeah. So in our, in our video that we posted on social media, um, well, we promoted it on social media to start, you know, to everyone who followed us, you know, me and Alex reached out to everyone we could to, you know, let us know what Soul Purpose is doing and, you know, our Instagram account um, for everyone to see. Um, we, you know, we put up a flyer on our Instagram that we sent out and we actually, you know, put up flyers around the area that we were going to be in. And we actually went into the park and gave flyers out to some homeless people. And we were like, you know, this time, this day, come and, and, and grab some sneakers. Um, and we also went to our, our school. We presented at you know, what we'd call a morning meeting. It's just some kids in our grade and where everyone gets together and, we, and you can, you know, teachers usually talk and, you know, we, we spoke to them and, and we told them what we were doing, that we need volunteers. And, you know, that's how we got those classmates to come and help us out. Um, but it all worked out really well. And like Alex said, we got some news coverage and, you know, it kept, it kept going uphill from there. The news got more donations, uh, more following, more awareness, you know, all, all good stuff. Yeah, actually, um, every single one of the volunteers who signed up for our first event still is active with us today. Uh, you know, they help us, you know, w with us increasing donation size, you know, we rely on them to help us out. And then also, um, yeah, like Ross said, it just caught on from there. Uh, we've re since our first one, we've held a second taking it to the streets event where we targeted uh, a different area. We were on the Upper West Side. Um, this was an area that's been, uh, you know, it was hit by COVID. Um, there's been a little bit of, uh, you know, rezoning with shelters. People are getting moved around. Um, and we knew that this was an area that, you know, had a good population. Um, same kind of situation we set up within one to two hours. You know, we sold out of stuff. Um, and, and actually, even just through holding a second event, we were able to almost expand in a way where we had, uh, you know, people dropped off you know, and sponsored the waters. Uh, we had a few other organizations that were with us. Um, so with each thing, we just continue to, you know, add people to this great mission. 
that's yeah, and one so just one tiny thing to add on to when Alex mentioned the other event. Um, I think we gave away around 250, 300 purpose packs. That was, you know, a yeah, more. huge increase from our other event. It was great. Um, and we, you know, we sent out a press release to all the media outlets, all the local ones. And actually one caught on and CBS 2 News came down. And, you know, um, they did a little segment on us and that aired also. And, you know, it, all this has been great, you know, all and... All, all, all good stuff. You know, the media is great. It's just, it's taking us uphill. It, it's all great. It's all great. Yeah, it's, it's, that's awesome. Um, it, 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 I w it's something I was actually meaning to ask because I lived in the city or I lived in Brooklyn and worked in the city probably seven or eight years ago when I worked for Complex and um, was there for, I guess, two or two years, three years, something like that. Um, but one of the things that it's, you know, it's kind of like, uh, recently I lived in LA and I'm I'm in Sacramento now, but I spend a lot of time in San Francisco. And one thing that I always wonder about in terms of like how these types of organizations, uh, you know, can, and how just people in general can support the homeless is, you know, how do you, how do you, you know, make it diverse enough and get around to different locations enough, right? Because there's just massive amounts of people that need the help and they're not always in the easiest to find spot. So it's cool to hear that you guys had thought that you thought about that and said, okay, cool. We're going to do this here. We're going to do this there. We'll, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you'll spread around, you know, the city and, you know, to the other boroughs as you guys keep growing. Right. Um, you mentioned, you mentioned something and, and, you know, maybe this is something you had thought of or, or, had tried or thinking about, but like you mentioned sort sort of like a mobile drop off type of thing. Um, have, have you, have you done something like that? Or is that something that's in the works? Cause I, I really think that's uh, another cool way to, um, related to my story. So when I, uh, worked for nice kicks, like a long, long time ago, like almost 15 years ago now, when they first kind of started, um, we actually did that. Uh, you know, we kind of just rented a van and, and loaded up the back of the van with all these shoes and, you know, drove around and handed them out. We didn't, you know, we didn't make it a, like an, an official thing or do anything real big about it, but it was just a, a small way that we could give back knowing that we had collectively the handful of us working there had a lot of shoes. So um, is that something that is in the works or that you've tried or what is, what's that going to be about? I mean, well, the first thing that Ross mentioned earlier, our mobile sneaker drives, uh, th this is an option that we actually, uh, you know, came up with as we uh, were beginning to kind of get out of the critical point uh, after COVID hit. Um, and it was one of the ways where, you know, we knew businesses, uh, especially in New York City, were not going to be opening um, for a good amount of time. And, you know, we had already launched All Purpose. Um, we had in the interim during the, you know, real critical time switched over to fundraising and sourcing uh, brand new sneakers and brand new socks so that we can meet uh, the guidelines of the shelters. But right now, um, and something that we're continuing to implement is you can go on our website and because, you know, we are New Yorkers helping New Yorkers, um, you know, our team will drive anywhere within the five boroughs uh, to pick up your donation. Uh, it's like safe contactless. You know, we stay six feet. We Everybody has their masks on. Um, and that's a way that we've been able to really, uh, you know, continue collecting donations and uh, strategize even when, you know, things get a little bit difficult. Uh, in terms of what you're saying, um, you know, try and drive around and donate, uh, you know, it's definitely come up on the table um, in terms of something that, you know, we would like to do. Unfortunately, there's not really a perfect system, you know, if we happen to uh, you know, we're driving around with sneakers and socks and we come up with a homeless person who is a size 11 foot and, you know, we're meeting him for the first time. We don't know his, it gets a little bit difficult. Um, I will say that, you know, in the warmer months, uh, even with COVID, we're able to do a bit more. We're able to get outside uh, during the winter months. It's definitely a lot more difficult uh, with COVID and winter. You know, we have to be indoors. Uh, you know, smaller number of people cleaning at one time. Um, you know, we're still able to increase our size, but in terms of, you know, increasing the types of, you know, ways that we give back, it's definitely look, something that we're very much looking forward to be able to do during the spring. 
Yeah, and um, in addition, you know, the, these mobile sneak drives are still going on. You know, you can sign up on our website and we'll come to you. Um, those have been really good, especially, you know, as he, as Alex said in COVID, it was a, it was a really good way to, it was a good solution. Um, and with, you know, driving around with sneakers and socks and, and giving them out on the street, it, it is tough, like he was saying, you know. And he's right, if you have a size 11, but we don't have that, you know, it's it's tough. We'd love to, if we could magically do it on the back of our car, we'd do it with all the guys on the street. But, you know, it's tough. But, you know, we do weekly deliveries to homeless shelters. Um, you know, we started out in my family truck doing, you know, 25, 50. Our max in the truck might have been... 80 85 um you know our, our biggest now donation we need a u-haul um we, we donated 500 about a month and a month or a month and a half ago 500 purpose packs fit in that giant u-haul we had five other team members um not including me and alex come um come and help us and you know we went to six seven shelters and we we went around and dropped them off um yeah definitely the the making spirits bright event which was our holiday give back uh what what i would say is closest along the lines of kind of doing a uh drive around delivery donation uh type event uh yeah we loaded the whole truck went to like eight different shelters throughout the entire day with our team members and just kept giving that's so great yeah guys. and i think you mentioned nice kicks right yeah yeah, yeah. The nice kicks um funny funny little little note night they actually you know we we did a little linkedin message to them and we we got in contact with them and they liked what we did and they wrote a little article about us actually great on and that event it, yeah and they posted it on the instagram and it's on the website i'm pretty sure and it was like on the featured page for a little bit i just i just want to add that i thought it was a little funny yeah but. that's great that's great yeah and that's that's it's one thing that i you know i I've come to love about like the sneaker community, right? There really is like a, a really solid group of people that are, that are passionate about sneakers. You know, like, I think uh, like you said, Alex, before, you know, sneakers to some people are like almost as important as food. Like, but then like everybody, you know, kind of needs them at some level, right? Like it's, it's, you know, I, I think the community though really understands, you know, in, in my experience that, Hey, we gotta we gotta find ways to elevate the people that are doing good things, right? Because, you know, there's there's so much, you know, so much negativity in the sneaker space, right? Because people just get upset that they don't get a pair off of sneakers app, or they don't, you know, or they don't like Easy's, or they don't like Jordans, and it's like none of that stuff really matters. Like we all can have our own personal taste. Let's just like keep it moving. But um, so I guess like one thing I was curious about: what's the process like for you guys in terms of? you know, collecting like, and, and, you know, cleaning and that kind of stuff. Are you, you guys, are, you know, are doing the cleaning and, and kind of like making sure everything's good to go before you package it up to take it back out. Right. Ross, do you want to, do you want me to talk about how we collect and you talk about uh, how we Sounds process good. everything? Okay. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, so we, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, we've been able to do now, I mean, obviously, uh, COVID-19 is still an issue, um, and we still take our precautions and guidelines. Um, but essentially what Ross and I would like to do is set up a network of donation box locations, um, usually in high traffic areas. Uh, that's the best way that we consistently um, process donations. Um, you know, we've been really fortunate to have a great relationship with Harry's Shoes, which is on the Upper West Side. Um, and we have a donation box in that store and we also have one in their kids store. Um, in addition, we have uh, a box in competitive edge fitness in Port Washington. And that's a way that we really, um, a, we're able to connect with that business's community, um, both on a level of, you know, getting them to give back, but then also in the hopes of, you know, we, we pick communities and businesses where. Their, their fans, who will be our fans, are interested in sneakers. Um, and so Harry's Shoes has, has you know been great support for us. Uh, we've been able to collect a ton of donations from there. And then from there, uh, you know, we'll collect our donations. And then we bring them to Ross's spare bedroom in his apartment, 
that we use as our headquarters. We've also gotten uh, an additional space from the Dwight School, which we hope to be using pretty soon. Um, but yeah, Ross, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit? Yeah, so right now I'm actually sitting in front of, you know, one of the many shelves that we have um, of sneakers uh, and laces and soles. Um, so when we get these sneakers, like I was mentioning before, you know, clean them, sanitize them, special solution, and we throw them in the laundry and they come out, you know, like brand new. Um, you know, we take these sneakers, we let them air dry. We have a we have a humidifier in here to speed it up a little bit, the process. And, um, you know, we if the laces are no good, if the soles are no good, we replace them. If the shoe is no good, you know, if there's any rips, tears, you know, weird coloring, stains, something like that. If it's something, you know, me or Alex wouldn't wear, I, I'm not going to give it out. You know, it's, if it's something I would wear, I'd 100% give it out. I wouldn't want to give out something, you know, ugly, not right. You know, I'd like the person to be happy. Um, but yeah, we bring them here. Um, at my house, we turned the patio into the cleaning area. Um, and this bedroom, uh, you know, the little headquarters. Um, but here's where, you know, if they need laces or soles, we do that here. Um, we transform these sneakers like these are ready to be tied up. You know, they have the laces out. Um, they're straight out the laundry. They're actually, these are one of the very clean ones. They're pretty white, actually. Um, you know, we scrub them, they come out, they come out real nice and we make them into the purpose pack, our final product. And, you know, we could either have one of these events, do a little weekly donation on, on the weekends. Um, and that's, that's really all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think just to quickly add on, uh, in terms of our packing process, uh, we are actually one of, uh, the company Bombas. Uh, so every time you purchase a pair of socks, their mission is to give back a pair of socks. We've kind of added on to that mission a little bit um, and become a Bombas donation partner. Uh, so we work with them and partially uh, part of our socks that we use to create our purpose packs are uh, from Bombas. So yeah, so definitely, uh, you know, Bombas is a company that we look to as, you know, kind of like, uh, a little bit of mentorship a little bit, um, you know, in terms of looking at sole purpose from a business side of things. Um, you know, we look towards them and towards other nonprofits that are established. And yeah, that that's pretty much our process full circle. That's so dope. It's so dope. Um, all right. So you've mentioned a few things, you know, where you've, you've kind of run into, I guess, challenges or just things that you weren't aware of. Um, what, what, what are some of the things that, that you've run into that, you know, that, that you just maybe just didn't expect some of the challenges and, and like, what have you learned to, to, you know, deal with those things or, you know, just make your guys's efforts here more efficient in, in, you know, processing those types of new discoveries. Yeah. I think, you know, as Alex said earlier, you know, sole purpose didn't become what it is today, you know, overnight, it took a lot of time. You know, we're a year, year in, um, you know, we donated over 2,300 uh, purpose packs and over 8,500 pairs of socks. Um, you know, one of the biggest challenges was starting sole purpose in the midst of the pandemic. Um, you know, pa the pandemic made everything harder, you know, not I mean, just for us, but for everybody. Um, you know, as we mentioned before, also the shelters, they didn't want to take used items. They didn't, you know, they didn't want to touch anything that we had, but we had to, you know, make them feel a little comfortable. We told them what we do. We told me we, we clean them, we sanitize them, have a special solution, we launder them and they, that they come out brand new and they started to get more comfortable. We started to make more deliveries. And, um, that was, you know, one of the challenges that we faced with the shelters. Um, you know, we, we wanted to create a team. Um, we wanted to, you know, try and get a good team around us to help us, you know, grow awareness, um, you know, help us any day, you know, making some purpose packs, lacing some sneakers, even do a little cleaning. Um, you know, we wanted a lot of volunteers and now, you know, now we have over 25 from different high schools and colleges. Um, and, you know, one of the challenges before we started was, you know, our schools didn't want to put a box because of COVID. And now they actually, we, you know, we explained to them what we do um, and that, you know, We'll close them up in garbage bags, leave them away, and we'll get them at the end of the week. 
And, you know, since most of our donations come from New York City high school and college students, the sneakers can really be something special. It's not, you know, something from, you know, I, I, my dad always says he wears his sneakers down till his toes are coming out. You know, it's not it's not something like that. It's more of, you know, a nice pair of Jordans, you know, a real, real, real nice pair of Jordans. It's something, you know, someone would really remember getting. Um, yeah, Alex, you want to add on a little bit? Uh, yeah, no, I, I think, you know, obviously with every other nonprofit organization, you know, it, it takes, uh, you know, a lot from Ross and I, and we rely heavily on our team members and are really grateful for, you know, the, the extra hard work that they've put in recently. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the media and the attention that we have been getting has just been increasing, uh, you know, which is great for us. Uh, but at the same time, you know, Sole purpose, we operate on the weekends because we're in school Monday through Friday. As much as we would like to rather be cleaning shoes than in school probably, uh, you know, that's something that we do every day. We also have, you know, Ross and I just got through our college application process uh, in the midst of everything. And really it's just, you know, it's not, it's not a burden to us that we have to do this. It's more of a, you know, how can we do more even when we're, really constricted um and i i'd say that's you know we're, we're already at a stage that we never thought we would be um and so yeah we're just looking to increase that and that takes everyday efforts yeah that's that's, that's awesome i mean so i guess w with that in mind like you know coming up on you know all this transition for you guys personally in life and and whatever is next in the next you know year or so right what's you know, what are some of the plans for sole purpose and, you know, or, or anything that you guys are excited about, you know, in, you know, looking, looking ahead towards. So, you know, for the future, you know, we want to keep expanding our service coverage area, you know, more, more shelters, you know, all the boroughs, um, you know, we want to continue doing our take to the streets events. We love doing those. Um, it is a little tough right now because it's in the winter. It's very cold. You know, standing out there for a while is is not the greatest. And you know, placing more donation box locations than we do now. You know, Alex said we got Harry's Hair Shoes for Kids, CEA Gym, and some others. Um, you know, as as good as they are at you know collecting sneakers in that area, they also make a little media opportunity for us. You know, we like you know kids our age love social media, of course. You know, we like using it. And on our Instagram, we'll always make a little event out of everything, which we like to do. So, you know, we we usually get a few followers, you know, some more views on our stuff every time we post. So we try and do as much as that as possible. Um, you know, the box is also that they're, they're, they're custom made. They have all of our information on it. They got our little socials on it. Um, you know, it just spreads more awareness. And, um, you know, we, we just love to, you know, work with more, you know, organizations. Um, we'd love to get more donations, obviously. And uh, we, we hope to keep this going in the future. It's really good. Yeah. I mean, Ross and I, you know, we don't, we don't really know exactly what our plans will be for next year, exactly in terms of uh, us for school and of that nature. But in terms of sole purpose, I mean, I don't think we're going anywhere. I think this is something that now that we've established a real good, uh, you know, structure in terms of what we do and how we do it. It can be applied to anywhere. And, you know, the down, I mean, it's a good thing and also a bad thing, but there's homelessness everywhere. Um, and, and there's sneakerheads everywhere. Uh, and now that we've got the perfect system, um, for any sneakerhead, any person who wears shoes to give back their shoes when they're done, um, you know, I think it's something that we'll be able to expand far beyond what we do, what we've been doing so far. Uh, and yeah, I think we're both looking very much forward to being able to do that. Yeah, well, I, I'm I'm looking forward to to you know watching you guys' journey. It's it's been really dope to talk to you guys. Um, and like I said, I, I'm just excited to to see you know folks like you doing good things. Uh, any way that I can support, obviously, let me know. Um, I'll make sure that we, you know, have everybody's information and stuff and have your guys' stuff uh, in the in the links below. Um, 
I guess my last question off off the sole purpose, what what's like favorite sneaker that you guys have been rocking lately? Ooh. Ooh. Ross, you wanna go first? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I I mean I I need I need okay a second to think. I got I got like three in my mind. I got I got I got these new pair of like I, Nike kill shots. Okay. You know, they're more walk around, but they're comfy, they're good, they go with a lot of stuff. Uh for basketball, I got these Peach Gym KDs. I'm loving them. And I got some Air Max 95s, you know, multicolors. Uh, I'm loving those are all my three go-tos right now. Three go-tos. Nice, nice. Good choices. I'm going to yeah, solid choices for sure. Um I'm gonna, I actually, you know, thinking about that question, I can't really decide which i mean i've got um i love my jordan ones um i actually have this really cool of converse weapons uh that my dad actually kept around from when he was back in the day and he played in them um i think it's a really cool shoe that kind of helped shape our sneaker culture today but i think ross and i can both agree for sure that the last pair of sneakers that we gave to a homeless individual were definitely you know, our favorite pair so far. Right on. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure talking to you. As I said, any way I can support you guys, whether that's connecting you with people in the city that I've worked with in the past or, or work with now, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk after, after we hang up here, but, um, I guess last but not least, let's like, make sure that everybody knows, uh, your guys' Instagram handles and website and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, our website is soulpurposenyc.com and all of our social Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, at Soul Purpose NYC. Uh, you can find out more about us, you know, donate, do whatever you want, check us out, drop a follow. Um, but yeah. Nailed it. Perfect. Right on. All right. Well, we appreciate everybody listening. Make sure you give these guys a follow, hit the website, find out how you can support them. Uh, And I'll catch you on the next episode. Peace.